there's kind of a story, I guess, that I want to tell. And I'm not exactly sure how to tell that story. But it has to do with me. It has to do with isolation and art and community. The times when I have felt the most alone, especially when I was young, were the times uh, when I wasn't making art or performing. If I'm not doing art, if I'm not singing in a choir or playing in a band or doing a play or a musical or a comedy show or taking some kind of art classes or animation classes, I don't, I don't feel like myself. I feel like there's something missing from my life. My eighth grade year, the one year, um, my eighth grade year was the one year when my school district cut choir out of the budget, and that was the first time where I got depressed to the point of being suicidal. It wasn't the direct cause, but it was a domino. None of my choir friends were in my classes, and my teachers didn't know how to deal with my spazziness. Uh, so I got bullied a lot, and I got treated like a problem that needed to be gotten rid of. And without any creative outlet through which I could express my feelings, and without any opportunity to be with like-minded people, I think my life felt pointless, and I, like, I really believed like I would be miserable forever. Just because it felt like there was no way out of it. And I think it's easy for people to ask, you know, how do they let it get that low? How did they let themselves get to the point of suicide? Um, but I think that anyone who has been there knows that when you're in it, it's, it is hard to imagine you'll ever find your way out. It feels never ending. But it's not. People suffering with depression and having suicidal thoughts are experiencing feelings that, despite appearing permanent at the time, are really temporary. And there are so many different ways forward. What saved me was the simple fact that high school was coming, and I would be back in choir and theater and art again the following year. It's a pretty dramatic statement, but truthfully, access to a community of artists is what saved my life. That said, I also began medical treatment, including medication and therapy. While it's good that we consider what's happening with the chemicals in our brain when addressing these problems, there are other lenses through which we can look at them, and by doing so, we might learn how we can give the people affected a fighting chance. If we say yes, anyone having success with antidepressants should continue taking them, but that's not the cure and there's more to it, then we can start to unpack why the person is depressed in the first place. Two of the things that I think are almost guaranteed to inevitably make someone depressed, uh, and I experienced these myself, um, are isolation and a lack of fulfillment. Lacking deep connections with the people around you and losing access to the thing that gives your life meaning. And for me, that has always included arts, creativity, and self-expression. There was a day when I realized how important those things were to me, creativity and community. But out of that realization itself was born a third sort of pillar of fulfillment for me, which was impact the realization that I'm probably not alone, and that if there are people like me, I might know how to help them. That was my introduction into social impact, and it began my personal mission of helping artists stay happy and stay safe by giving them access to the arts and to each other. I think so many parts of modern life make it easy to feel like it's just you against the world. The arts are there to remind us that it's not just you. You're not alone. Art gives us hope. That's what I think my responsibility is as an artist. To be that, a herald of hope.